What's up, code gang? Today, I'm gonna to be showing you guys two very simple Python project ideas that are for the complete beginner. So these two projects are, drum roll please. Remember these? The first project is a Mad Libs that you can use on yourself, your family, or your friends, virtually of course. And the second project will be a fake login that you can use in Terminal to trick your friends into thinking that you might be actually hacking into some super secret mainframe. You don't even need to know loops or functions in order to do these projects. These are for the total beginner. So let's get started. The first project is Mad Libs. The idea behind Mad Libs is that you're trying to insert a word into a sentence that you already have. And we can use that by using Python strings and user inputs. I have a folder with a madlibs.py file in it. And in this file, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna check to see that input works. So, you know, I can do input word. And then I'm gonna assign that to a variable. So I'm just gonna say word equals input word. And then I'm gonna print the word to see that we have successfully put in an input. So I open terminal, um, I have to change into the correct directory. So I'm gonna do that. All right, and then, so that's what the CD is. It means change directory and then I'm going to look at the files I have in there and we see that my madlibs.py file is in there. So I'm just going to run that. All right, it asked me for a word, so I'm going to type in Kylie. And it prints word, which is currently assigned to Kylie. So we know that our input is in there correctly. So now I want to put this word into a sentence and then print that out. So I'm actually going to assign this sentence as a string to another variable. So we're gonna call that Madlib. And you know, my sentence is gonna be super simple. It's gonna be subscribe to Kylie. So here I'm gonna put channel name and then that's gonna be my word. All right, so we've seen how to concatenate strings in the past. You can do subscribe to and then do plus word. That would be valid. But then this also assumes that word has to be a string object. What if that's not the case? What if somebody accidentally inputs a number? That's why I'm gonna use the dot format method. In the dot format method, what happens is you have these brackets in your string and these are basically placeholders. And then after the dot format, you pass in different variables. It'll print out in the string where that bracket is. Basically here in these examples, they have within the brackets F name and then age. And then after the dot format, they have F name equals John and then age equals 36. For these two below, you'll notice that they don't have these variable names in here that get assigned after the dot format. And that's because it just takes the order that these brackets are in. So, you know, John is first. So my name is John goes there and then 36, I am 36 goes there. So here we can use either of those. I'm just gonna do this because it's, it makes things a little bit simpler when you have things labeled out. It makes it clear for when there are a bunch of other words that you wanna input into here. Okay. At the very end, we wanna add a print Madlib. So Kylie Ying, and then a print your Madlib for you. Subscribe to Kylie Ying. So that's your basic building blocks for this Mad Libs. And now to make this a funny Mad Lib, all you have to do is replace this string and give it some adjectives, nouns, verbs, etc. So I'm gonna try to create a quick short story. So this one is gonna be called computer programming. So computer programming is so, let's do an adjective. It makes me so excited. All, and then I'm gonna do a new line, the time because I love to, let's do a verb. All right, and then now we have to assign these to our inputs. So let's do an adjective equals input adjective, and then adjective verb one 
is an input and then verb verb two is also an input verb and then famous person famous person all right so now we have our variables and now how do we put that into the mad lib well we saw in our example earlier here that we just have to assign these to the variables in the format for the string so here I'm going to do adjective equals adjective. So this adjective refers to this placeholder right here. And this one refers to the variable up here. So you're basically assigning this input to this placeholder. And then verb one equals verb one, verb two equals verb two. And then famous person equals famous person. All right. Let's see if my sister can help. Can you help me with uh, a YouTube video? You just have to say like four words. Okay, madlibs.py, give me an adjective. Smart. Smart. Verb. Dance. Dance. Verb. Run. Run. Famous person. <laughs> Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift, that's, that's who I was thinking. Computer programming is so smart. It makes me so excited all the time because I love to dance. Stay hydrated and run like you are Taylor Swift. So that's all you really need in order to make a Mad Lib in Python that you can do with your friends, family. Drop a comment below, DM me on Instagram or Twitter, and I'll totally share some funny ones from you guys. All right, so the second total beginner project that we're gonna do today is a fake login in Terminal. You're gonna want somebody to enter a username and a password. And then if they match the ones that you have in your code, then you grant them access. Otherwise, you either say username incorrect, password incorrect, or both are incorrect, basically access denied. And then you can even play this up a notch. And instead of just printing a statement like access granted, you could even pretend that you're like hacking into somebody's secret website or something, I don't know. Anyways, let's get started on that. All right, so the first thing I wanna do is I want some variables that I can compare what the user is inputting. So I'm gonna need a username and a password stored in here. So I can say my username is Kylie, and then my password is secret password. All right, and just a note, if you're interested in like how logins actually work, nobody stores the password like this. Everybody does something called hashing. Basically what they do is they map this into like a secret translation of this that nobody can recover and reverse into your password. That's how you keep passwords safe in these giant databases. But for this example, we're just going to do password equals and then whatever the string password that we're assigning is. So now we're also going to have a username input and we're going to do input username and then we're gonna have a password input. All right, so these are gonna be strings that the user is inputting into the system. This is where my if statement comes into play. So if the username input is equal to the username, and here's one of our operators that comes into play, so now we know that both the statements on the left and the right hand side of the and have to be true in order for this entire if statement to be true. The password has to also equal the password that we've stored. And if that's the case, then I'm just gonna print access granted. Now, instead of just saying that they're wrong, I wanna tell them what part of it is wrong, either the username, the password, or maybe both. Otherwise, we can use an L if here because this statement up here isn't true. So we want them to move on to the next if statement. So L if the username input equals the username and the password input does not equal the password, then here we're going to print password incorrect. And then of course, if the username input does not equal the username, and the password input equals the password, then we can print 
the username is incorrect. And of course, if all three of these if statements isn't true, then that means that the username input does not equal the username and the password input does not equal the password. So we can just use an else to capture that logic. And if that's the case, then we're going to print, you might want to check both fields. So let's give this a try in terminal. All right, username, let's do Kylie, password, I'm just going to do password. Password incorrect. All right, let's give it another try. Uh, Kylie, secret password. Cool, so access granted. You know, you could even spice this up a little bit and make it seem like maybe you're actually hacking into something. Here we can do please wait. And then I'm gonna say print, okay, loading. What, what happens if I get everything right? So I can import time at the top and then I can do, I can call time.sleep and I'll cover these imports in a later video, but this is something that's pretty simple right now. So I'm just gonna put import time at the top. And so then that gives me access to all the code that time already has. Again, I'll cover that in a later tutorial, but I can do time.sleep and then it'll basically pause for the number of seconds that you pass it. So here it'll pause for five seconds and then here we can do, we can even print like three dots, right? And then, and then we can say, all right, you have security clearance. Let's see what happens if I do this. Kylie, secret password, access granted. Okay, please wait. Okay, loading. All right, you have security clearance pulling up the secret mainframe. We're in. So today we just went over two really simple Python beginner projects that uses the logic that we've learned in the past three videos. And of course you can build bigger and bigger things, but at this level right now, once you know your if statements, your variables, you can do fun projects like this and you can show these you know, to your friends, to me. When you start coding in Python, it's good to get familiar with just how the system works, how to run your code, et cetera, so that you can build on top of that. So that when you learn your loops and your functions, you know how to write your own script already so that you can insert these new tools that you learn in the future into your code. All right, so in case you guys wanna try some of the Mad Libs that I've created, what you're gonna do is go to the link below, the GitHub link, Beginner Projects 1. Here's how you're gonna run the code that I have. So you're gonna click this code button. If you know how GitHub works, you can git clone it, or you can just download the zip file and drag it somewhere that you wanna put it. Or I can unzip that, drag this into the trash. I'm gonna rename this beginner project. So you'll notice that there are a couple of items in here. Login.py and malibs.py, those are just the files for this tutorial, the code for this tutorial. Main.py is the one that you want to run. So essentially what main.py does is it goes into sample madlibs and it selects one file from here at random to run and it runs the Mad Libs from that file. Okay, so if I go to terminal, then the first thing I have to do is change directory, so CD, into where I just put this folder. So I put it into my documents. So I'm gonna go documents, beginner projects. And then if I do LS, which is showing all the directories, list directories, I'll notice that main.py is in here. So I can run Python 3 main.py and it'll pull up one of the Mad Libs that I prepared for you guys. So the link for that is down below. Check it out, have some fun with it. So that's all for today. Make sure that if you guys come up with anything that you love, share it with me, Instagram, Twitter, these comments, and yeah, see you guys next time.